back uh, from Ron with On Point, and we're going to continue where we left off and go to the next stage of setting up your flight controller. Okay. The next thing we're going to go to is the power tab. You just click on the power tab. There's a couple things that we do here. First of all, the very top uh, position up here, it says number of cells in series. Now this battery is a four cell battery. That is a 4S battery. It has four individual cells. So we're going to go in here and we're going to plug in the number four. Now this one's already set, but just go to four, plug it in, and hit enter, and it sets that. All right. Now, the other thing you can do is um, you can do a uh, calibration. And what that does is the aircraft, now we're going to plug this in just so we're getting that voltage. It'll read the voltage when this is plugged in. Okay. So when we hit the calculate button for voltage divider, it's telling us that our vehicle voltage is measuring right now. It says it's at 16.29 volts. Now, if we take our handy dandy voltage tester, and there's a couple of different kinds out there, all you do is you plug it into the connector on the battery, and it will give you full voltage reading of the battery. And this says it's at 16.49. So there's a 0.2 volt difference. So we're going to say that this is at 16.29 volts and tell it to calculate. Now there was a little bit of an error in there between the two, but that can make a pretty big difference in the amount of flight time you have as far as when it will go into uh, fail safe if it reads a uh, low, bat low voltage uh, situation. All right. So once that's done, you just hit close. So that is set. The next thing we need to do, and we'll have to unplug the battery for this, is we're going to do calibrate the electronics B controller. So if you remember the electronics B controller uh, was probably a four and one with the wires that come off connect to the motors. Right? But we're going, to calc we're going to calibrate that. To do that is we're going to make sure propellers are removed. It reminds you to make sure that, again, as I said before, there's no reason to have propellers on an aircraft until you're ready to go out and fly it. So don't let the students put the propellers on. Right? So you have to use the, it says right here, propellers must be removed prior to going through the calibration, and you have to use the USB. All right, so we've got the USB connected, the battery is disconnected, we hit calibrate. Once we do that, it gives me another warning, make sure the propellers aren't on there, and it's going to tell us to connect the battery. Once we do that, you'll hear it make a bunch of noises and go through a calibration. And that is it. All right. So the, it, the electronic speed controller is now calibrated. And that's all there is to calibrating the electronic speed controllers. At this point, you can disconnect the battery or leave it connected. It's going to be up to you. I always save the battery strength for later because usually when you're done, you want to go do some test flights, so we're going to disconnect it. All right. Okay, so next we're going to go to the motor tab. So for this, you have to have the battery plugged in. We tilt the aircraft over. So what we're going to do is we're going to check each motor. We're checking a couple of things. We're making sure that when we select channel one, that motor number one turns. Same with two, three, and four. We're also going to check and make sure they're spinning the correct direction. If they're not, it's very simple to, to change that, uh, but we have to verify that we've got them on the right channels and they're spinning the right way. So first we're going to do, um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. I like, like to put a little piece of electrical tape or some kind of a tape onto the motor shaft and just tape it around. It can be a little easier to tell what direction is turning visually. Um, sometimes I'll put my fingers inside the side of the motor and do it that way. But, so, it tells us to make sure the propellers are removed. Again, as I said before, there's no reason to have propellers on the aircraft when you're indoors building the aircraft. So, we've got our radio on. It's all powered up. We click on the little button that says, that activates it. says, now we're going to move the sliders. This is motor number one. Bottom right over here, or bottom left is uh, motor number two number three and number four. So motor number one is this one. We want to make sure that it is spinning to begin with, and it is, and we want to make sure it's spinning in the right direction. It should be spinning counterclockwise. So I think it's wrong.
Yeah, it's spinning clockwise. So we're going to have to reverse the spin on that one. All right? But we're going to go through all four of them and figure out what other ones we have to reverse while we're at it. All right? So now we're going to go to mode number two. Put a little tape on here. All right? And it should also be spinning counterclockwise. Motors one and two here spin counterclockwise and three and four spin clockwise. So we're going to check motor number two now and it should spin counterclockwise. And it is spinning clockwise as well, so this one's incorrect. And sometimes you do this, you may get all four of them right. I've had occasions where I got all four of them uh, wrong. So this could be the other, the other direction. So uh, next we're going to go to motor number three, which is over here. And as I said, this one should be spinning clockwise. We'll see how we do here. All right, number three. And number three is spinning clockwise. So number three is correct. So well, that's it for that one. And so now we're gonna check number four and it should spin clockwise as well. And the reason these spin opposite directions is to offset the torque. They all four spun the same direction. The entire aircraft would rotate the other way. So here's number four. And again, it should be spinning clockwise. And it's spinning counterclockwise. So three of the four are wrong. So we'll shoot, do a shoot little video here and show you what we have to do in order to reverse the spin of the motors.